Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another, another bit of Total War, Warhammer 2, quick match gameplay. This time around we are playing as the Dark Elves against the High Elves. Um, going in with, or specifically I suppose, we are going in with the Cult of Pleasure against the High Elves. And uh, you may be wondering why that first and foremost, but <laughs> that is because with Hellebron, or Hellebroken as she's being derisively called right now, is broke OP, you will find that a lot of people draft dodge and try to avoid playing against Nagareth or Dark Elves, because they naturally assume that players are going to be running those uh, factions. So I decided to evade that entirely and run the Cult of Pleasure, which of course cannot run Hellebron. That's uh, Marathi's sub-faction. This does mean I can't run Malekith either, but uh, it's something I've figured, you know what, I'll take the penalty. If I can get a few games in with Dark Elves and really show them off to you guys um, without running into builds that are just specifically meant to counter current Hellebroken. So regardless, you can see the Dark Sorceress here. She looks kind of, she looks amazing on her uh, Dark Pegasus there. Um, just riding along, trying to get a good little shot there. Where but uh, you can see it's the poor thing there, uh, flying around, and uh, Dark Sorceress on there. So she's a Sorceress of Dark. Uh, very cheap Lord, caster. Nothing fancy about her, really. She's basically like Barthas Argelt, stat-wise. But um, she does have a decent sort of spellcasting ability. She gets Arcane Conduit. She gets... I brought in Soul Stealer, Chillwind, and uh, Power of Darkness, as well as Spiteful Conjuration on her. Uh, and then I did decide to bring Arnsley Paul's Black Horror, which I think is an interesting wind spell. I saw it in one of the tourneys, and I thought it was re looked really cool, and uh, definitely we'll see it in this game, and uh, we'll see how it does. I, I definitely was really, really excited to try it out. Um, and of course she was cheap. She was a very cheap lord by Dark Elf standards because she's not good in melee, so uh, you can cut some corners there. And you might be wondering why bring Lord of Dark instead of, say, Lord of Death. Well, that's actually for Soul Stealer because it does give me that option to heal her um, if things go south while at the same time damaging my opponent. For the rest of the build, a front line of Blackheart Corsairs with a single unit of Sisters of Slaughter. Nothing too fancy there. Basically designed to dumpster uh, Sisters of Avalorn, uh, Lothan Seaguard, uh, Shadow Warriors, and units like that if I can catch them in melee. They're very solid units overall, uh, nothing too fancy, and they're fairly cheap. They are backed by a single unit of Blades of the Blood Queen, who of course do have uh, monstrous melee stats. They're a Regiment of Renowned Executioner, so level 9, they've, or Veterancy 9, they've got Frenzy, they've got Guardian, which is fairly irrelevant here, but they are just absolute beasts if in close quarters, especially against uh, dark, against most high elf infantry. Uh, Sisters of Slaughter are also actually interesting in the fact that they have this little thing here called the Trial of Blades, which when they're losing in melee, uh, this recharges. It lasts for 15 seconds. It's kind of like the strength of the penitent for the pe um, flagellants or the uh, mer the uh, I forget. What the, well, I actually just forgot what the um, oh opportunist murder for the uh, for the uh, nasty skulkers. Uh, so it procs. It only lasts 15 seconds, but it does provide a massive buff of plus nine melee attack and plus four armor piercing damage. So these guys can absolutely monster mash squishy infantry like much of the high elf roster right now. On the flanks, we do have two units of Dread Spears, uh, just to secure them against heavy enemy uh, cavalry. On the one side, we do have the Doomfire Warlocks. Nothing too fancy about these guys. We, you've probably already seen a bunch of them from other YouTubers. Uh, they do have poison magic attacks, 40% missile or physical resist, which is absolutely great. Uh, and more importantly, they have two bounce spells, Soul Blight and Lesser Doom Bolt. So they can definitely apply a lot of damage and debuffs uh, with those abilities. Um, in the back line, we do have the Bolt Fiends, Dark Shards that have a, a minus 24 missile block chance backed by two vanilla dark shards of the shield. So these three units I'm really hoping can take just about anything my opponent brings to task, just shooting them down and uh, really shredding them. Finally, in the back here, we do have a unit you probably haven't seen that much, at least I haven't seen very much of, either in Quick Match or in um, or in any replays or anything like that, and that is the Knights of the Even Claw. So these guys are the Regiment around Dread Knights. You can see they've got 120 armor. They've got great, the great stats of the uh, Dread Knights. They are a bit more expensive, but in turn you do get Murderous Mastery and more importantly, no Rampage guys, so <laughs> I'm definitely hoping these guys will perform rather well. They basically seem to be uh, questing knights on steroids, and uh, that is really how I was hoping to use them here, and really hoping to make use of them. For my opponent's army, uh, Alariel the Radiant up in the sky, uh, High Elves, so nothing much to say there. Um, she is over here, you can see with her crazy ponytail there, just riding along on the uh, eagle. Um, she's coming in with a whole bunch of spells, mostly damage oriented actually. You can see Banishment, you can see Tempest, uh, Arcane on Forging, Earth Blood. Uh, of course, Boon of Isha providing immunity to psychology, Shield of Safri and uh, Life Bloom providing ex extra heals, Arcane Conduit, and then good old Star of Avalon, which is basically a mini, uh, small area, but bigger heal, Earth Blood, that she can cast two of. So, a very, very potent little spell there. Her front line, or my opponent's front line here, is uh, Trio of Lothram Seaguard. 
They are backed by Handmaiden of the Everqueen, providing some slight bonuses to the shooting. Uh, she is on foot, nothing too fancy, but she does provide plus 10% missile damage and plus 5 reload skill. Now, interestingly enough, my opponent chose not to bring the plus 10 reload sk speed skill here either, so I'm, we'll see how she does. Um, she is backing up, as we mentioned, two Sisters of Avalorn, the archers, a uh, single bolt thrower here, so very heavy missile presence. Uh, seven missile, or eight missile units in total. Uh, the only pure melee units we have are the Keepers of the Flame back here, who are Regiment around Phoenix Guard with magic damage, and they, they themselves explode in fi flames when they die, roasting the uh, enemy unit, killing them. And then Dragon Princes, so we'll definitely see how they do, and uh, you can see they are uh, now sallying out. You can see in the meantime I do get hit by a Tempest over here, taking quite a bit of hurt, immediately getting shot at. Tempest is doing immense amounts of work to the very low HP of the Supreme Sorceress, and uh, she's just getting melted. Uh, really some rough stuff there for me. But uh, in turn I do try to cast a Doom Bolt, but it's just not going to hit, because my opponent spies it way too soon. You can see the uh, <laughs> marker there, and it completely whiffs. So nothing much to say there. You can see my front line getting decimated, and my opponent is focusing a lot of his fire on the Harganeth Executioners. Um, and this sort of center pocket, because anything that misses is basically going to the Bolt Fiends or the Black Arc Corsairs. You can see we're taking a lot of hurt. In the meantime, on the flank, the Knights of the Ebon Claw do engage with the Dragon Princes and get hor horrendously dumpstered on the charge. Um, the Dragon Princes with their Monster's Charge bonus of 80, and uh, Martial Mastery are just hitting these guys so very hard. Uh, granted, the Knights of the Aben Claw will start pulling things even shortly thereafter, but uh, this opening charge definitely set the pace for what would have been a, uh, probably a loss for the Knights. Uh, but fortunately, I do get Spears in there, and they are going to be helpful. In the meantime, you can see a Soul Blight going down on these Sisters of Avalorn, on these Loth and Seaguard, as the Doomfire Warlocks charging from the rear. Harganath Execution piling in through the center, getting caught on the Handmaiden, but tearing through her pretty efficiently. And uh, you can see things definitely going uh, rather well over here. The uh, Sisters of uh, Slaughter are getting a little caught up on the Handmaiden, but at the same time they do get onto these Loth and Seaguard, and you can see, although they're really clumped up over here, they are doing quite a bit of hurt. And um, now you can see we are going to be seeing it as Reefall's Black Horror, and it, it is being winded up over here. Banishment, uh, so there's quite a bit of magic here. Banishment going down in the back, annihilating my Doomfire Warlocks, beating up the Black Horror Stairs, annihilating my opponent's own Sisters of Avalorn. So definitely some friendly fire going down there. My both sh my uh, Dark Shards all melting these troops over here. But as Repulse Black Heart is going out, and you can see it, it's just such an amazing, just look at the graphics on this, it's like this pall of smoke, and it's just extending, and just, it's like a wind of death almost, but very slow moving. Unfortunately, I completely underestimated how far it would move, and it hits my Sisters of Slaughter, and promptly annihilates almost the entire unit, with their zero armor, their physical resist, that doesn't matter against magic. I basically just destroyed 1,000 gold worth of my own army. As you can imagine, I was not pleased, nor impressed with my own performance there. Uh, and at this point, the balance of power tips very heavily away from me, and uh, things were looking uh, very, very bleak. I just wasted about 1,100 gold worth of my troops. Honestly, I got a good value of the Azripal's Horror against these Loth and Seaguard, but most of them are still alive. The unarmored Sister of the Slaughter got basically annihilated, so a terrible trade for me. Fortunately, though, on the flank, the Dragon Princes are finally getting beaten down by the Knights of the Even Claw. Uh, they're getting help from the uh, Dread Spears. Over here, my troops are slowly but surely rallying, coming back into the fray, and despite the buffs these guys were getting from uh, Ariel um, with Star of Avalorn, the Dark Shards are going to start annihilating these Keepers of the Flame. They're going to start melting them very, very quickly. Now, unfortunately, there is still fire pouring in from these uh, Eagle, from this Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower, but shortly thereafter, you are going to be able to see the Dark Shards are just going to start pouring in on these uh, Keepers of the Flame, and uh, once they start taking fire, they are not going to last all that long. Despite their physical resistance, despite all that, they're just not meant for this sort of endurance. You can see the Doom Bolt coming down and absolutely dumpstering about uh, several of them uh, in a second. And of course, once they lose their mar mas uh, martial mastery, they're going to be much in a much tougher spot. On the periphery, you can see the Dragon Prince is getting destroyed, finally breaking. Uh, the Knights of the Even Claw lost about half their strength. The Spears lost a little bit, but you know, we do get uh, our sorcerers to charge in there. That way, Lariel can't pursue her. And things are starting to even out, despite everything looking very, very terrible mere seconds ago. The Blades of the Blood Queen do push through, and you can see they're absolute monsters. They trashed the uh, Handmaiden, they dumpstered those Loth and Seaguard, now they're on top of these archers, they're on top of the Eagle Hop Bolt Thrower, and even at this weak state, they are going to be absolutely devastating. Over here, the Keepers of the Flame getting annihilated by the uh, Bolt Fiends and the Dark Shards, who just focus fire them and are able to break this unit rather quickly. Once they are over, my opponent is really being reduced to just the scraps of his troops. He's got his Sisters of Avalorn still fighting, he's got these uh, Loth and Seaguards still fighting, but against Black Heart Corsairs, they really don't stand a chance. And um, I do start getting my Sorcerers in there, you can see the Knights of the Ebon Claw coming in, and uh, Dread Spears pulling in, so things are definitely looking up over here. Doomfire Warlocks pursuing the Sisters of Avalorn off the field. I wanted to make sure they wouldn't come back. In the meantime, the Blades of the Blood Queen do turn around, and they are going to start helping against the Sisters. And you can see the Sisters there taking a monstrous charge from the Knights of the Bevan Claw. 
they're getting completely dumpster. Just look at these knights. Oh my god, it's crazy. I, I absolutely love the uh, look of the um, Cold One Knights. I'm really, really glad that we can now get them uh, with a, at least some reliability <laughs> included. But over here you can see Ilariel getting surrounded, getting beaten down. At this point, it's actually going to be GG in a, a match that went incredibly horrible early on. We managed to swing the tide almost entirely, do a full 180 in the space of about 30 seconds. This is kind of how High, high Elf versus Dark Elf, honestly many Elf games in general go. Situations can change almost instantly. Now, looking at the, looking at the stats and looking at how things went, first and foremost, as Reapel's Black Horror, it's very powerful against squishy troops. It's basically Fiery Convocation or Sunfang on steroids. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> if you cast it and don't realize how far it goes, how far it travels, you lose a unit of Sisters of Slaughter. And that is what happened to me in this game. That is 100% my fault. I destroyed about 50 models, maybe 40 models worth of Sisters of Slaughter in a single cast. Almost lost my entire, <laughs> almost lost the entire game because of one stupid cast. So definitely be wary of that, but it is a very powerful spell. Uh, don't underestimate it. it. can be incredibly potent. It looks very cool as well graphically, but um, <laughs> watch out. Don't kill your own troops. For the rest of the army, uh, I do think this is honestly a decent anti-high health build. I mostly wanted to try out the different units. I had a lot of fun with the Dark Shards. They really melted the Phoenix Guard. They helped melt through a lot of the shooting. Uh, definitely solid there. The Knights of the Ebon Claw, I was not that impressed with. They got kind of trashed by the Dragon Princes on the charge. Um, not really sure what to think about them. Maybe there's other there's definitely other matchups where they're better. Against heavily armored infantry, they are uh, going to do much better, I think, than dragon princes. Um, they can fight and sustain combat much more efficiently. So I think they definitely have their niche, though. For their cost, it's definitely a little rough. They cost 1550 to save the dragon princes 1450. So I, I'm not entirely sure what to think. They're definitely decent, though. Um, otherwise, had a lot of fun with the supreme sorcerers. Blades of the Blood Queen are amazing. Um, Doomfire Warlocks definitely very nifty. Uh, for my opponent's build, I think, honestly, should have brought more infantry. Uh, Lothan and Seaguard, once they got stuck in melee, things definitely deteriorated rather quickly. Uh, there was a huge investment in shooting here uh, that didn't quite get full value, because once once the lines met, the Lothan and Seaguard started getting dumpstered by the Blacker Corsairs, who were just better than they are in close, close quarters. Um, the Blades of the Blood Queen could carve a path of bloody destruction through my opponent's center. Had I not actually miscasted a... a misaimed my Black Horror and killed my Sister of Slaughter, they would have actually done an absolute number on the Lothan Sea Guard and then the Falling Sisters of the Thorn or of Avalorn. Uh, they're very, very powerful and I completely misused them there. So I think that definitely too much shooting in this build. They definitely try to cram in some white lines or something uh, to deal with Dark Elves. But otherwise, cool to see. Good game to my opponent here. Uh, we came right down to the wire, really. At one point, the balance of power was very much out of my favor. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was a very tight game. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope you found it entertaining. hope you uh, enjoyed that lovely black horror. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. If you have any comments, any criticisms, anything like that, be sure to share them, and I'll respond as soon as I can. As usual, guys, I do appreciate you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.